Lipsis Digital is the only B corporation in London. That's still true, right? It's still the only headquartered here. Yeah, headquartered here. Yeah. And so she has been through the, a rigorous process or been a part of that process to get Ellipsis Digital certified as a B corporation. So she's going to speak to what a B corporation is and, and the process of going through that. Thank you. Thank you for You're coming. You're welcome. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm Rachel. I am uh, the VP of Sales and Marketing at Our Traction, Ellipsis Digital. It's all the same kind of family. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I sort of ushered us through the, uh, the process of becoming a B Corporation. Um, I'll talk a little bit about what we did and what we learned through that process, and I'll talk a little bit about kind of bigger picture, um, what it means to be a B Corporation, why it's a cool kind of avenue to pursue, um, who it might be a good fit for versus not so much, um, uh, some of the benefits that we've kind of seen since we've become a B Corporation, what the community's like, all that stuff, and then a little bit of um, kind of just really um, you know, not so, not necessarily hands-on, but kind of what happens as you go through that process. What does it kind of look like? How do you introduce people uh, to that process? What does the the impact assessment look like? Which is actually kind of the the underpinning of the whole uh, B Corp certification process. So uh, that's that for me. Um, so just to start, um, well, I'll I'll sort of introduce you to what a B Corp is. So does everybody know what a B Corp is? Awesome that I put the right thing together. Um, <laughs> it's always good to kind of know um, uh, that you kind of you figured out your audience just right. So um, B Corps are for-profit companies um, uh, that are certified by the nonprofit B Lab. So B Lab uh, is based in around Philadelphia. Um, B Corporation started in the U.S. They still have the greatest stronghold in the U.S. Um, in Canada, we're getting more and more. Uh, we're putting an even bigger emphasis on growing the community, and that's one of the things that I'm actually involved in in my sort of spare time. I'm on the growth committee to help kind of uh, get, a, get a few more Canadian businesses into the, into the channel. Um, we're actually hosting the Champions Retreat in Toronto this year, so that's one of the reasons that we're trying to grow the community here a little bit more so that we have a few um, Canadian companies kind of showing up and saying, hey, this really is a cool thing, and let's talk about it. Um, so around the world, there are over 2,000 uh, certified B corporations uh, from 50 countries and over 130 industries. So it's a pretty broad uh, kind of category. You've got service businesses, you've got uh, consumer products, you've got some manufacturing. Um, there's a, a, a pretty broad range. And all of these businesses, what they have in common is to really redefine what sex success looks like in the business world. So. Um, you know, uh, businesses add a lot of value. They create. They can create a lot of a lot of positive impact. Um, they can also create a lot of different impact. So the idea is, let's you know, figure out how we can work together to to shift as much as we can toward more positive impact. So uh, more specifically, uh, B Corp is to business what Fair Trade is to coffee or Energy Star is to appliances. Um, so. It's, it's a label in a sense, but it goes a little, it, it goes a quite a bit deeper. Um, and in terms of, you know, why B corporations matter, um, you know, what we, what we do affects more than our bottom line. What we do affects uh, the employees that we work with. Uh, it affects the communities that we work within. It affects the clients that we work with. Um, how we work with our vendors can actually influence our communities. Um, as well, so choosing who we work with, uh, kind of, in a in a way that um, that is good for uh, for the world in general, is uh, is one kind of underpinning of um, kind of how we operate. So, B corporations don't just consider the bottom line, and we don't just consider the triple bottom line. Um, we're actually legally accountable to our employees, uh, the environment, um, our clients, our community, which includes our vendors. And our, our shareholders, too. I mean, they're still part of the equation <laughs> as a, as a for-profit business. Um, so 
I'll, I want to tell a little, a uh, quick little story about a company called uh, Market Basket. They're actually, as far as I know, not a B corporation, um, but uh, they're a New England grocery store. They had a CEO who was um, really loved by his employees. He was really big into profit sharing, made sure um, people could take their vacation time, did uh, holiday bonuses, things like that. Um, he was forced out of the company uh, in order to return more money back to their shareholders. Um, and that didn't go over very well. So the people who worked for him, like I said, really loved him. His community also really loved him. And um, out of the 25,000 employees they had, 10,000 actually showed up at headquarters to protest that decision, which was eventually overturned and the CEO was brought back. Um, and, you know, that story is a good example of, you know, B Corp is one sort of pathway to kind of recognizing that the world continues to evolve. We're continuing to look at um, how we can how we can use business as a force for good. Um, and in this particular instance, we had, a, you know, a, a community that sort of rallied around. We really appreciate that this business is, is in the is operating in the interest of doing good things. Let's keep that going because once we take that away, we don't like it so much anymore. And um, so that's, uh, I, just, I, I really, I appreciated that story a lot when we were starting to figure out how to tell our story um, in terms of why we became a B Corporation. So in general, B Corporations are, uh, are better companies. I mean, I'm a little biased, obviously. <laughs> but they're, they're, they offer better opportunities for their employees. Um, they create positive change within their communities. They generally tend to be better for the environment, and they're held accountable for all of those things. Um, and collectively, we're a group of businesses that, uh, that really use business as a force for good. So what does that actually look like? Um, I have an example from last year. So last year, we were supposed to have our champions retreat in North Carolina, and we ended up as a, as a community choosing not to go that route. Um, the, the Champions Retreat actually was built around this idea of building an inclusive economy. And at the time, um, there was, I have to remember the name of the bill, um, HB2, uh, otherwise known as the bathroom bill, uh, where there was some controversy around um, which bathrooms people could use based on their uh, gender identification. So, as a group of businesses, there are um, you know, hundreds of organizations that actually show up at this retreat. Uh, we made a collective decision to move the retreat outside of North Carolina and ended up having it in Philadelphia where, where B-Lab is headquartered. Um, and you know what? If I were a really great presenter, I'd have some story about how that actually changed something within the community of North Carolina, but I'm not that good. So. Um, <laughs> The reality is that they lost a lot of money within that community, right? They lost um, what we would have spent on hotels. They lost what we would have spent on food. They lost, um, you know, what we would have spent in that space and any additional kind of tourism dollars that would have come from people showing up there and maybe spending a little extra time before and after the conference, that sort of thing. So it's a, a pretty massive impact financially, regardless of um, whether that actually created a bigger change from a legislative perspective. Um, so out of that retreat, um, we also sort of came up with uh, this idea for an inclusion challenge. So this is a, um, a B Corp wide challenge for everybody to improve their impact scores in particular areas that actually um, influence diversity and inclusion. And the way that we come at that is um, from, it's just from a number of different directions. So it could be things like diversity and inclusion training within the workplace. That's one thing that you can get points for. It could be looking at um, your supply chain management and whether you actually um, evaluate vendors through the lens of uh, diversity and inclusion. Do you kind of, do you favor uh, doing business with organizations that are fronted by people who generally tend to be marginalized? Do you, um, operate more locally in order to kind of improve the local economy that then which then kind of has additional impact um, further on out uh, looking at leadership and how that's structured so the percentage of the leadership team that's female or otherwise um, representative of uh, 
uh, more marginalized folks. So that's, um, that's kind of what the entire community is doing, and, and we're kind of looking at how we collectively can move the needle on creating a more inclusive economy. So all of us are challenged to come up with at least three metrics that we want to improve on our impact assessment. Um, they've actually lowered the bar to one just to make it accessible for everybody because we have some smaller businesses that, I mean, there's only so much you can do, right? Um, but, but the goal is at least three and uh, kind of moving from there. And they've done a really great job of kind of checking in with us every couple of months to kind of get a, a sense for, first of all, are we continuing with the challenge? Have we moved the needle at all already on some of the things that we're, uh, we're planning to do? And so forth. Um, and the community as a whole is a really awesome one. So there are just, there are so many incredible stories within the B Corp community. Um, and if you want to learn more about them, I highly recommend uh, Be The Change. Um, so they started out, they were going to be a magazine, and that didn't really work out. It was a lot, of, a lot of work for them to kind of get the content that they needed into the channel. It ended up kind of being a, a, a fantastic ad platform for Patagonia because they have a lot of great stories and a massive <laughs> kind of marketing department and that sort of thing. Um, so now they're, they're pretty much, they're primarily web-based at the moment. Um, and continue to kind of turn out some really great stories. And then in more of a grassroots sense, there's the Boiling Point podcast. So uh, Greg Hemmings is uh, the, the owner of Hemmings House and they're located in New Brunswick. And um, they've done, they do, they focus on social impact video stuff. So um, the Millennial Dream is a story that they've been shopping around. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that or have heard of it. They're, uh, they're touring that, that film around uh, across North America and having a great time doing it. Uh, and Greg also hosts this podcast called The Boiling Point. And it's not just B corporations, it's a lot, a lot of B corporations, but otherwise um, also just social impact businesses that are um, maybe on the path or at least values aligned. Um, it's a great podcast to listen to just for business stuff, whether or not you're kind of in the B Corp community. Um, so, how's that? Sounds pretty interesting. It's a, it's a, it's a cool community. Um, so now what? Um, I'm gonna be honest. B Corp has some really great content and you're looking at it. Um, so I had the option <laughs> of, you know, kind of figuring out what they would want you to know and how to put that into my own words, but they've actually put it into theirs and that's actually what they want you to know. So I'm gonna uh, kind of flip over to, to some of the language that they generally tend to use. And um, so some of the benefits of becoming a B Corporation from B Lab's perspective are um, being able to maintain your mission. So for example, Ben and Jerry's is a B Corporation. Um, and they were bought a while ago. I don't even remember how long ago now. Uh, but because they are a B Corporation, they have some elements of their business that are actually, um, there are some, some legal structures in place that ensure that their initial mission and, um, and a lot of the work that they did to become a B Corporation actually remains baked into their business. Um, Differentiating from pretenders, so there's a lot of greenwashing, there's, you know, you can put labels on all sorts of things. What makes a B Corporation different is that we actually, we have a very rigorous assessment that we have to go through, and we don't just go through it once. We're validated when we go through that process, and then we recertify every two years. So it's a continual um, process of, of kind of both improving and remaining accountable for what we were good at doing in the first place. Um, which leads into benchmarking and improving our performance. So um, there's the impact assessment is the primary tool through which we do that. Um, and businesses have kind of taken that a whole bunch of different directions. So um, I think Etsy had, they had a, a whole group hackathon where um, they, they brought the company together and, and people just sort of broke off different pieces of the assessment that they, they wanted to kind of improve upon. And as an organization, they came up with a list of areas that they wanted to improve. And I think they improved their assessment score by um, like, like over 20 points. It was a fairly substantial improvement that they were able to make. 
Um, more locally, I was actually just at a B Corp leadership development event in Guelph. And um, there's an organization there that we were talking about the, uh, the inclusion challenge and how people were going about uh, navigating that. And uh, within their organization, they have like eight people. So they got together and looked at the inclusion challenge and paired up, so they have four groups of two, that's the right math, um, and, and just found one thing that they were really passionate about, each of, those, each of those pairs, and each of those pairs is now working diligently on improving that one piece, which for an organization of eight people is a, you know, plenty, right? Um, so that's how that can look. Uh, attracting and engaging talent, um, I mean, that, that piece is anecdotal at this point, but we, we certainly know anecdotally that people are choosing to work with more purpose. Um, and that's really strong within the millennial generation, but not just. My mom just left her job because she needs that too. So it's, um, it's a pretty broad spectrum as far as that's concerned. Uh, collaborating with peers, so I, um, I shared a couple of, of ways that we kind of do that. We have our Champions Retreat. We actually have a closed social network where people share um, successes, challenges. We talk really openly about business problems, and it's a really cool community in the sense that people just speak up and say, yeah, this is how we addressed it, um, and we're coming at the inclusion challenge again through that lens as well. Uh, saving money and accessing services. So we have a big directory of fellow B corporations. When you become a B corporation, there's, um, there's a directory, directory of discounts. Some of them are like fun things, like discounts on you know, athletic wear or whatever. Um, so that, that you know, individual employees can benefit from. And then there are some business offerings as well. So we're in there, for example. Uh, we offer discounts on annual reports for fellow B corporations or on our digital marketing services for fellow B corporations, that sort of thing. Um, generating press. So, I mean, we have opportunities to do things like this. Um, <laughs> go out there and, and, and talk about this community and, um, and share, share our experience. And raising capital, that can look like a lot of different things. So um, there are actually some funders, of course, who, who are looking at um, you know, putting, putting money into social enterprise and, um, and otherwise kind of uh, positive business, uh, business growth. And then you know, in, even in our world, we've actually gotten business because we're a B corporation. So um, we, we, just did, we just launched a website with the McMichael Gallery, um, and they actually chose us in part because we were a B corporation that told them as an arts and culture organization that we had some really uh, strong values alignment in terms of actually you know, wanting to uh, kind of make a difference in the world and not just trying to get as much money as we could from the McMichael or just have them in our portfolio to be able to say that we had them in our portfolio. Both of those things also were helpful, but, uh, but it was really um, that kind of values alignment and community focus. This slide doesn't work, so I'm just going to tell you. Um, oh, no, it does. Um, okay, so this is their, uh, their slides, of course. So who can cer certify for-profit companies of any size? We don't have to be looking at a social enterprise. Um, any industry or geography. Um, the industry and, and geography and service area um, as well will influence the version of the assessment that, you, that you're looking at. Um, any legal structure and companies over a year old. Um, so if you're talking to companies that aren't a year old, what do you do? Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but, um, but it, as a general rule, I would just say that the assessment itself is a really great way of kind of figuring out where you want to take a business. Um, so it asks a lot of questions about um, you know, what your governance looks like, um, how, you, how you're treating employees, um, how you're addressing environmental, uh, your environmental footprint, those kinds of things. And I can tell you from our own experience, even going through the impact assessment had a huge um, positive impact on how we built and grew our business because it forced us to ask some questions about 
which way we wanted to go with certain things. Did we want to be structured as a co-op or did we want to continue on the way that we were? We decided to continue on the way that we were um, and then knowing that we wouldn't get points for being a co-op, which actually gets you a lot of points. Um, we, we then made some other decisions about where we actually wanted to make a, a positive difference. Um, so how does a company certify? Um, completing the impact assessment, um, you have to get a score, a minimum score of 80 out of 200 points. Um, that's not even 50%. Yeah, uh, it's a pretty <laughs> rigorous kind of assessment. So um, it's, it is not easy to score even the 80 points. Um, that being said, it's um, there's there's a lot of room for improvement once you kind of hit that hit that bar and a lot of questions that you can continue to ask um, as you grow and change. So meeting the legal requirement um, in Canada, it's really easy. We only have one way that becoming a B corporation actually changes um, your legal structure, and so you have to make a. There's a small amendment to the Articles of Incorporation. Um, that basically says rather than just existing in the interest of shareholders, you have to consider those other stakeholder groups, the environment, um, employees, community, those kinds of things. Um, we still ran it by our lawyer just to make sure that it was in the right place and that sort of thing, but it's, it's relatively straightforward. Once you're working in the states, it's a lot more complicated. They have state by state regulations. In some states, you have to also be a benefit corporation. We don't have any of that here. Um, and make it official. So there is also a declaration of interdependence. It's fairly straightforward. Um, and then there are some uh, certification fees as well. And then you get a profile on bcorporation.net, um, which is where you get to tell your whole story. That's the fun part. That's what I. That's the part that I enjoy. Um, so just to give a bit of a, a frame of reference. Um, B Corp fees are uh, based on the, the revenue um, range of the business in question. Um, I'm not sure if anybody mentioned earlier today, but there is a credit for uh, Ontario B Corporations that certify this year. There's um, up the first 20 that certify this year get a $250 credit um, toward their certification for uh, it's, a, it's through a grant for Canada 150, so. Um, so how it's done. Um, and you can feel free to kind of go and, and sort of play around while, I, while I'm talking away here. So beimpactassessment.net. Um, it's, it's pretty straightforward. You go in, you put your, you know, you register just like you would register for anything. Um, and that kind of gets you on their list and, and that sort of thing. Um, so. The time commitment, because um, I've told you it's a really big assessment and that's kind of scary. Uh, so the first time you go through, there, there are two versions of the assessment. There's a quick assessment, um, which is obviously quicker. Uh, so it's about 30 minutes to typically to go through beginning to end. Um, and that's assuming that you're coming in with some information and you're probably gonna have to take some guesses here and there about some other pieces and that's okay. Um, to do the full assessment is more like two to four hours. And after you complete the assessment, if you hit that bar of, of 80 points, then you can go ahead and hit submit and um, have a call with an advisor. And that's probably another 60 to 90 minutes. And that advisor will kind of go through and, um, and help. I wish I had known this, by the way, when I had gone through the assessment because it wouldn't have taken as long as it did. I would have gone through and just made my best guess and then had someone else walk me through all of the things I needed to know because they do an excellent job. So um, in Canada, we are eligible for some, some points just by being in Canada because we have some different approaches to human rights and employees' rights and mat leave, it exists and those kinds of things. So. Um, yeah, so, so there are some automatic points that we get, which was really awesome uh, to kind of understand because we were coming at it through, um, with Matt Leave in particular, actually, that's a great example. We were looking at it through the lens of, you know, going above and beyond what people are actually entitled to. Um, but the entitlement itself is actually free points. So, um, so that's my gift to you. You can walk away knowing that. Um, 
and plan for additional time to gather supporting information. Um, and then, of course, there's the time to go through the reassessment every couple of years. Um, so uh, the assessment itself encourages organizations to really look deep within their business. And it does mean that if you have multiple stakeholders at the table, um, you may need to, within the organization, you may need to kind of bring them all together. Um, so when it comes to kind of looking at the worker questions, you, you would need um, HR, you might need some management folks. Um, if, if in some cases you have one or two people who need to answer all those questions, right? So um, it's really just a matter of kind of who's responsible for those key areas within the organization. They all need to be at the table as you kind of work through the assessment. Um, and like I said, I mean, going through the assessment itself really gave us an opportunity to reflect on what we were doing well and where we wanted to grow and do better. Uh, so what do you need? Um, I mentioned that you can make a lot of, a lot of guesses as you kind of go through the process. Um, but company financials are a good starting point. There are a lot of questions about that. They still expect it businesses to be somewhat profitable. That's kind of part of the equation of sustainability too. Um, having an outline of who you're spending money with when it comes to kind of local purchasing um, or other, other purchasing policies, supply chain management questions, that kind of thing. Um, a list of clients or products that have been sold over the last year or so, so that you have that information available as well. And then the rest will be kind of random. So there's a, there's in that sort of assessment call, that 60 to 90 minute assessment call, um, there is, there are a handful of questions that are chosen at random that they'll then ask you to validate. So if it's, um, if the question is, do you have a local purchasing policy and you say yes, they might ask you to produce that, which is fair. Um, so if you don't have it, then you have to go and write it. And, um, and if, you, if you do have it, um, then you need to be able to produce it. Uh, and then after that initial assessment and validation, there will, there's a second round where there's um, a few additional questions where they ask for um, some backup documentation. But they also provide templates to kind of fill in. So I don't generally recommend going and trying to figure out all of the information that might possibly be requested. They give you enough time to turn it around. And um, we did actually try to cover all the bases and found that we ended up kind of undoing some work or we weren't answering the questions the right way in the first place. So just kind of understanding how um, how they'll be asking in the first place is, is really helpful. So um, answering the questions, like I said, as much as you, the first time through, estimating the best answer is, is a good starting point. Um, and it's a good way to kind of get a sense of where you fall on the on the spectrum. So if you're already at about 80 points and you haven't even kind of gone into the nitty gritty, then you don't have to do more. You still have room for improvement later. Um, if you're not even close to the bar, then that tells you, OK, well, we've got some areas that we need to focus on a little bit more. And then you have the next step where you go, OK, well, what's what's the why of the business? So um, is is the business very specifically focused on the environment? That, and if so, then that's probably an area where you'd really want to have a strong story in the impact assessment as well. Um, does the business exist really to support community efforts, whether it's collaboration or um, a social enterprise model that's very has a very direct impact or whatever the case may be? If that's the deal, then that um, that's the area of the assessment that I would I would encourage spending a lot more time on. So um, ultimately, it, I mean, yeah, there is a, a really numbers and detail oriented side to the assessment, but it's also looking at it through the lens of what story do you want to tell about the business and, and how do you want to be able to reinforce that with data. Um, they have some really great guidelines for, you know, explaining the question further. Uh, so for us, we didn't understand half the questions that they had about governance. Um, and so tell me more about that. What is a board of directors? Do they actually have to have um, sort of some sort of uh, fiduciary legal kind of connection with the organization or can they be an advisory board? Those kinds of things. And they do a really good job of uh, kind of outlining that. Um, as you go through, you can uh, mark a question for improvement. 
uh, you can also mark a question to come back to it later. So I don't even know the answer right now. I don't know if I need to know the answer, I'll come back to it later. Um, and they share question waiting, which is really helpful, again, when it comes to, um, we haven't even hit the bar, so what, what, where do we need to kind of make up the gap? Um, and then after the fact, you continue to have access to your assessment, so, um, so being able to see, again, where, where you want to improve as a business, you can look at where you have the greatest opportunity to do that. Um, they have a help dialogue, which is a new addition since I did this, and it would have been very helpful at the time uh, that I went through the process. And then they are also asking for feedback. So um, as a community, the, the B Corp community as a whole and B Lab as an organization is really dedicated to, work, to continuous improvement. So um, they're also looking for input about, you know, this doesn't really apply to our area, or maybe this is a better way of measuring this, or this is something unique that we've done that might actually be a cool thing to kind of spread out throughout the community. Um, and I don't even know what time we started, so I don't know how much time we have left, but I'll tell you a little bit about our journey. Um, so when we became, when we started thinking about becoming a B Corporation, this was in probably 2009, I think we, we started kind of hearing about what this was all about. And there were some really cool brands. Um, so I mentioned uh, Ben & Jerry's, Delicious, um, Patagonia is a big one. Um, and I was actually thinking this morning, like I have my winter coat as a Patagonia coat. This morning, my soap was also from a B Corporation, so I used Dr. Bronner's. Um, my razor is from a B Corp. I didn't even know that, um, so it just kind of happened accidentally. But it's just <laughs> it's interesting, kind of how how many organizations actually are represented in the B Corp community. Um, Bows All Natural, if you enjoy craft beer, is also a B Corporation. There are a lot of craft beer um, B Corps. There's just a, a real strong alignment between those those kind of value systems. Anyway, we we knew about some really cool brands that were part of this movement, and so we started going. Okay, well let's Let's learn a little bit more about that. And so we did. I actually came on board in 2011, and we were still in the thinking about it stage. And then we started the talking about it stage. And then we finally got certified, and it took us five years. It doesn't have to take that long. Um, one of the reasons that it took us that long is really, first of all, we didn't prioritize it. It was a nice idea. Um, if it's a priority, it's important for it to remain a priority. Um, and then the other piece is, as I said, we would kind of go through the impact assessment and then go, oh, well, I mean, maybe we, maybe we should look at that thing. Um, you know, maybe we should consider becoming a co-op. Maybe we should consider uh, what our HR infrastructure looks like, whatever the case may be. So we would sort of start on the path and then get distracted and make some changes to our business and then go down the path again. Uh, whole thing the first time and then and looked at continuous improvement after the fact. Um, I mean, this is our manifesto. We love it. I'm not going to talk too much about it, but one of the questions that we, that you'll see in the assessment is, is the, um, is positive impact somehow baked into the company's mission, vision, and values? And uh, so for us, this manifesto was actually created by um, a local poet, Holly Painter. Uh, she did an excellent job. Yeah. And, um, and she actually like recites it really well. I'm not gonna do that, because um, I'm not her. I'm not her, but um, I can't quite do it justice. I can't quite do it justice, but um, the manifesto itself actually influenced our values, the values that we have come up with um, in the last year or so, uh, which are do good, uh, team over self, listen, learn, deliver, and um, take the lead and sometimes the heat, but the do good is really a big piece and that's actually how we, uh, it's baked into our performance reviews um, and so we actually hold people accountable to that particular uh, piece of our value system. Um, so giving back has been in our DNA for a long time. Um, that's one of the reasons that we decided to go down this road. Uh, so we have volunteered as a team um, we, uh, so we were planting trees for Reforest London here, 
and uh, we started when we first started giving back in a financial way. Uh, we, we were helping host no, nonprofit websites uh, for free. That's kind of where we started, and then we eventually grew into uh, a social responsibility program to the tune of like hundred thousand dollars a year in in-kind services. Uh, is where we landed with that. Um, oh no, I don't want to skip this story. This is my favorite. So last year we took. Um, uh, kids and families who might not otherwise have been able to see Star Wars to see Star Wars and it was the best time um, I mean it's also a really positive community story in the sense that we pulled together a whole bunch of small businesses to kind of contribute financially to not only ensuring that people could see the film but that they could also have popcorn and and drinks and stuff like that because um, it's not I mean it's not the movies without that full experience right so um, my husband did photography we had like a whole kind of red carpet experience set up and it's a really like good story um, in terms of how how we felt about it but um, but it was al it's also a really great story in terms of partnerships so I think we had about a dozen different businesses come together to contribute financially to the, the popcorn piece um, what was uh, rainbow cinemas downtown here actually gave us the space uh, to do this and we worked with the Boys and Girls Club and and some other community groups to actually get the word out and get families and kids in to see the movie uh, so it was in line with our like we're a bunch of nerds so it kind of worked out well from that perspective too um, but it was a great way to kind of give back to the community um, environmentally speaking we are a digital business so we only have so much impact on the environment but we work in a gorgeous um, uh, facility that is also uh, an award-winning adaptive reuse space so as much as possible um, we advocated for with we don't own the space we're we're tenants but we're tenure tenants so we actually had the voice to be able to advocate for using um, uh, as many kind of original materials as possible and being as sustainable as possible in the uh, um, in the rebuild of our space. I mean, right? It's gorgeous. Uh, the London Roundhouse, it's just on uh, Horton Street, about, about a 10 minute walk from here, I can tell you, because that's what we did today. Um, <laughs> uh, and of course our team is really important to us, so one of the things that we looked at was um, you know our turnover rates and how we could improve that um, turnover rates are usually a good way a good indicator of what the culture is like for people as well um, and then obviously there's a business upside the lower your turnover um, the less money you hemorrhage so um, <laughs> it's, uh, it's a win-win um, as we went through the process we took a deep look into our own business and we also engaged some uh, some really great um, partners so uh, we actually we worked through pillar um, to, to find access to some experts in the social enterprise realm we went to Kitchener Waterloo to meet with PeaceWorks they're a, a fellow B corporation and they were pretty early on um, we worked with uh, Joyce Sue who was at Mars and is now the director of B lab Canada and she has been a fantastic resource and continues um, to be I mean, obviously she's a cheerleader for the movement because she is held accountable for growing <laughs> the B Corp community, but she's also an incredible cheerleader for all of the businesses that come on board, which is, um, it, it's a really awesome thing. Um, you know, we started going deeper into our own measurement um, and, uh, and you know documenting a lot more policies so we have a local purchasing policy we have a whistleblower policy we have you know all of those things that are really good for a business to have but that frankly small businesses um, as they're growing tend not to create the time uh, to to build um, and knowing that they'll evolve over time and we're not going to get them perfect but we have them in one place and everybody can see them and understand uh, what's available. Um, transparency is a big piece of the puzzle. So for us, HR was very, um, I mean, it's what it is in a small business, right? Like you hire someone, you kind of hope you've onboarded them okay, and you kind of hope that you tell them about your culture in, in enough of a way that they're gonna fit in okay. Um, but I mean, it's, it's not something that generally tends to get prioritized when you're, especially when you're in growth mode and you're like, oh God, how do we handle all this? 
Um, so we created an HR infrastructure where we actually have the space so people can see how much vacation time they have left and it's not just in the Google Calendar and oh, how many days did they, um, did they request and do they still have any time left? Um, and, and we can you know, have sick days reported and we can have actually even our volunteer time reported because we, uh, we give time for that as well. Um, and also doing things like performance management. So um, we actually have that documented. Uh, we did not before, honestly. It was like no news is good news pretty much. It was kind of, you know, uh, um, that's not atypical, I don't think. Um, so yeah, just really that HR infrastructure piece. And um, more specifically, as a certified B Corporation, uh, we measure what matters. Um, we consider all of our stakeholders and uh, we use our business as a force for good and that's actually where our score was. So um, I think we do some really good stuff and we got an 83. So it's like a, it's, it's not easy, um, but it is attainable. That's correct, yeah. Yeah, that's a great question for B Lab. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't actually have a great answer for that. Um, I mean, I do know that there is, um, in like in some states, in order to become a B Corporation, you have to also, once you become a B Corporation, you then must become a benefit corporation. Or maybe it's, a, no, it's that way. Um, and then as a benefit corporation, there are some legal realities. Um, so that's a state by state thing because that's how they work down there. And, um, and it's growing. I think it's 30, 31 states have the benefit corporation structure. I don't know how many of them have that, um, that if you're a B Corp, then you must become a benefit corporation thing. There's like, if you go into um, the kind of legal section, of uh, of the B Corp web the B yeah B Corp website, um, they they break down you know if you're in this state then these things and if you're so they have I think three or four different categories of how that works, yeah. Yes. Not necessarily, no. Um, so many, there are many that are both, um, but neither are um, dependent on the other. Um, yeah. Okay, and um, I'm presuming that the answer is <laughs> yes. Um, can you give me a, a yet and how would this one evaluate? Yes. So, um, in, in a in a number of ways. So um, the McMichael Gallery, for example, that was um, that was a project that we won in part because, I mean, it was a great presentation, but um, in part because we were a, a B Corporation and had that values alignment. Um, within the B Corp community, we have, uh, first of all, learned a lot about how to be an even better business because we talk openly amongst ourselves about business problems and it's a very kind of transparent community in that sense. Um, so that's more anecdotal, um, but that's been pretty cool. Um, we've had some partnerships with some, uh, some B corporations as well uh, where we've introduced each other to business opportunities. So those are some really kind of tangible ones. Um, yeah, and I, I mean, just more in terms of kind of how we look at our business, it's, it's changed the way that we do that. So we've been able to come at questions around our, our sort of values and, um, and even who we want to serve and how we want to serve them through, through a different lens. Um, just kind of going, looking at how does that actually make us a better B Corporation? How does that make, make us a better business? Those kinds of things, so. Yeah, so, um, so B Lab is the certifying body and they have consultants within B Lab who go through question by question and um, 
and and there's that uh, that 60 to 90 minute phone call where um, they have a conversation with you to validate. Uh, my sense is that they get a reasonable idea whether you're completely making stuff up or, or you can actually answer the questions effectively. Um, they randomly select some questions to actually validate whether it's with numbers or actually proving that you have a policy, that sort of thing. And uh, there's a recertification every two years and in that process different questions typically tend to get selected. So you look at uh, validating um, different information and beyond that um, there's a handful of B corporations that are audited every year. So that's a complete, um, we're going through your drawers, kind of. And so 200 stores, is that attainable? Do you know something? It seems like it's possible. Not, no. I mean, I don't know. I don't know anybody. Um, even some of the kind of darlings of the B Corp community are in the sort of 180 to 190 range, and they're, I mean, the kind of businesses where, so um, I actually don't remember what Patagonia's score is, but um, when you look at their supply chain, they can tell you the story of um, a product down to, you know, its inception. So it's, um, they have a very clear supply chain that is very transparent to the customer, um, and they have a, you know, whole buyback, you know, environmental um, impact piece. So there's, um, even they are probably in the, I don't know off the top of my head, but I would say 180. Perfect. Yes. Are there any other unique advantages of having PPP or having software? Yeah. That's a great question. Um, well, um, we work with a lot of programmers, so the good news is that they're very analytical thinkers and hold us really accountable to even when we talk within our walls about our culture to, well, is it really that good? So um, I, I think they really, we have a bunch of people who keep us honest. So um, we have a very transparent and um, an open culture, uh, a lot of open feedback kind of both ways, uh, which is really cool. Um, not to kind of rag on developers, I'm married to one, so you know, it, it's, but it, it is a really kind of, um, you know, problem solving approach. Let's look for um, where, where there might be some challenges that we can actually dig into a little bit deeper, which is actually, I think, the reason that our culture is awesome. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to get up to that range. A lot of B Corps, I, I would say, kind of fall in the 80 to 100 range. Um, and they're doing amazing stuff. So. For sure. Yeah, uh, yeah, and I think, yeah, I mean, the, the one-year requirement is, is to get certified, but I would actually, I would recommend um, to anyone who's kind of thinking about what they want to build to go through and see what those questions are because, it, like I said, the reason it took us so long was because we got so many ideas out of just going through the questions and going, oh, yeah, that would be great. Why don't we try it? Um, and, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a really great starting point. Um, I would also say that uh, probably the younger and smaller the business, um, the easier it is to just kind of bake those things in right at the beginning because there, there was definitely some change management that, um, not a lot, we had to pick and choose where we were going to create change, um, but there is some change management and there's, there is a little bit of, but this is how we do it, um, you know, that you kind of work through. Yeah. Are you staying for lunch, or you, will you be lurking in the space a yeah, little bit? Yeah, I'll be okay. around. Awesome. So you can always pick your brain if you don't want to ask in front of the crowd. Thank you so much for coming. That oh, was so great, so informational. I really appreciate it.